Mojo became Mojo Jojo! Hi, this is Simon Candish and welcome to another marvellous video. One of the most popular cartoons in the late 90s and the early 2000s has been Powerpuff Girls, a raging success among boys and girls alike. Blossom, Bubbles and Buttercup have won several hearts and they continue to do so. However, they are not the only heavyweight popular characters from their show. The main antagonist of the show, Mojo Jojo, is one of the most interesting characters in the animated series. The desires of this anthropomorphic chimpanzee are simple. He wishes to defeat the Powerpuff Girls and subsequently rule over the world. He even attains his goals in some episodes, albeit temporarily. In this video, we will go over how Mojo Jojo became a super villain and what makes him so competent over other villains across Powerpuff Girls as well as other cartoons. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, then please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. The ingredients chosen to create the perfect little girl, but Professor Utonium accidentally added an extra ingredient. Mojo Jojo's tragic origin. Right off the bat, it is more than evident that Mojo Jojo is a cunning, ambitious, and evil mastermind. He is consistently trying to take over the fictional town of Townsville, and eventually the world. However, his attempts are almost always hindered and thwarted by the Powerpuff Girls. Being as ambitious as he is, Mojo Jojo is not the type to back down from a fight, no matter how severe the obstacles, and is adamant about attaining his goal of ruling the world. However, Mojo Jojo never started his journey as a genius. He was a simple chimpanzee and a pet to Professor Utonium, the creator of the Powerpuff Girls. We got a glimpse into Mojo's origin in the episode Mr. Mojo's Rising. The episode began with a casual day in the life of the Powerpuff Girls, where they, yet again, found themselves in a complicated situation created by Mojo Jojo. The evil chimp had kidnapped the professor and taken him to his lair. On reaching the site, the Powerpuff Girls surprisingly overheard Mojo referring to the professor as father. Soon after, it was revealed that Mojo Jojo originally used to be Jojo, an ordinary chimpanzee and pet to the professor. Before the Powerpuff Girls were created, Jojo used the professor's lab assistant. He was super proactive around the lab but he was loved by the professor nonetheless. The professor had the desire to manually engineer little girls in his lab, successfully creating perfect humans. That's how he ended up creating the Powerpuff Girls. However, the experiment had a fallout that affected Jojo. His brain mutilated to enlarge, both in size and intelligence, creating a chimpanzee with a gigantic head and an IQ level way higher than that of humans. The concept for this was inspired by the Planet of the Apes, where apes attained higher intelligence than humans and eventually overthrew civilization. Mojo Jojo's character mirrored the ape known as Caesar. With his super intelligence, Jojo showed off impressive feats, which only paled in comparison to that of the Powerpuff Girls and their superpowers. With higher consciousness about himself, his feelings, and his surroundings, followed by the turn of events in his relationship with the professor, Jojo began to experience new emotions such as fear and the feeling of being inferior. Plagued by his new problems and isolation, Jojo was finally done with his life as a pet chimp and decided to take down the one thing that seemingly destroyed his life, the Powerpuff Girls. Jojo turned into the supervillain we now know as Mojo Jojo and dedicated himself to his aforementioned goals. When he shared this story with the others, the professor denied remembering much before the birth of the girls. However, to fix his relationship with Mojo Jojo, the professor decided to give him superpowers as well. With his newfound superpowers, Mojo naturally betrayed the professor and went against the Powerpuff Girls. With both brains and brawns at his disposal, he outdid everyone and dispatched the Powerpuff Girls thus removing the only obstacle between himself and world domination. He even got rid of his lab and weapons because he simply did not need them anymore. 
He had powers, so he did not need to tinker. Later, the professor finally remembered his pet chimp Jojo, but revealed that the chimp was nothing but a nuisance. He was a terrible lab assistant, destroyed everything, and was in fact kicked out on the day the Powerpuff Girls were born. Ultimately, the professor revealed one particular fact that took a huge toll on Mojo's sanity. While the professor made the concoction to create the girls, he was pushed by Jojo. This resulted in the professor accidentally hitting a container with the mysterious chemical X in it, causing the contents to give the girls their superpowers. This meant that Mojo Jojo had a huge hand in creating the Powerpuff Girls in their current forms. Distraught by the fact he created the very thing that he despises, Mojo Jojo was left shocked. This acted as a distraction, and then the Powerpuff Girls used this to their advantage and had his powers removed, taking him down once again. The thing is, Mojo did not become evil overnight. After he was made to leave the professor's side while dealing with his overgrown brain, Mojo used a paper bag to cover his brain and settled in an alley. Naturally, he was extremely alone and lonely there, with no one to be with him or care for him. This continued isolation and neglect turned him emotionless, which fueled his desire to destroy Townsville. He had stopped caring about what was right and what was wrong, so the journey to dominate the world seemed like a feasible one to get into. However, this did not mean that Mojo Jojo was essentially always evil. He was a regular civilian from time to time, reading his newspaper, strolling across the streets, buying things with money instead of stealing them, and having a decent relationship with the average person. In fact, even the Powerpuff Girls occasionally went to him for favors, without the fear of being attacked or without the intention of attacking. In the episode Moral Decay, Buttercup was more of an antagonist than Mojo himself. She accidentally broke Bubbles' teeth and then witnessed her get a dollar overnight. This promoted her to collect teeth and to get dollars for each tooth from the Tooth Fairy. Naturally, she started off by trying to get more of Bubbles' teeth. When that did not work out, she began to hunt the enemies of the Powerpuff Girls down. She reached every site of the action and knocked out the teeth of her opponents using them to get a dollar from the Tooth Fairy. After she was done going against the lesser villains, she shot for the stars, as she went after the heavyweight supervillains such as him, Fuzzy Lumpkins, and of course, Mojo Jojo. Buttercup managed to break into their homes and knock their teeth out. Later, Blossoms and Bubbles learned of the story from Mojo Jojo himself, making it evident that the villain was more than willing to have a sane conversation with the girls, while the girls believed his words. In the end, Buttercup's plans are thwarted by the girls with a little help from Mojo Jojo, making for an interesting scenario. Back to Mojo, what really affects him throughout all of his problems is his dejection towards himself. He often refers to himself as a monkey inside of a chimp to taunt himself. Other monkeys do not like him either, but there was a point when he dated a monkey called Moko Jono. There's more to this story, of course. In the episode Meet the Beat Oars, we got to meet the supervillain group comprising Mojo Jojo, Fuzzy Lumpkins, Princess Morbucks, and him. The name is a parody of the Beatles, and the episode makes several references to the group as well. The most notable one being the villains being pictured on the road in a manner similar to the Abbey Road album cover. The supervillains of Townsville joined forces after being defeated by the Powerpuff Girls repeatedly. This time, their combined efforts help them defeat the girls, making them realize that they are invincible together. And so, with this newfound glory, they band up to form the Beat Alls. In the upcoming fights, they end up reigning over the girls once again, and gradually this becomes the new norm. So much so that the Powerpuff Girls are forced to give up on saving the day, at least until the professor points out that they need to start by making the group split apart. Kind of like how the Beatles were an unbeatable band in terms of popularity, sales, and success until they split up. The Beatles broke up for several reasons, some more controversial than others. However, many have continued to believe that John Lennon's wife, Yoko Ono, played a part in Lennon leaving his group and pursuing music with his wife instead. The Powerpuff Girls pull off a similar feat as they lure Mojo Jojo into meeting a white-clad chimp by the name Moko Jono. 
which clearly sounds similar to Yoko Ono. Mojo soon begins to bring Moko everywhere with him, starts to dress similar to her, and partakes in odd performance crimes alongside her, which kind of mirrors Lennon and Yoko's relationship. Naturally, this causes the Beatles to experience the same fate as the Beatles, and the supervillains break up. However, the other members continue with their antics, just without Mojo. Once again, the Powerpuff Girls are called to the rescue, even though the fight initially leans towards the side of the villains. They are ultimately defeated by the girls, making their plans a success. Later, the girls hunt down Mojo to apprehend him and reveal that Moko is a performing chimp named Michelle from the town zoo, and that she was used by the Powerpuff Girls to help stop the Beatles. Needless to say, the plan was super successful, and Mojo was sent to jail while he harbored a broken and devastated heart. Unfortunately for him, Moko never liked him and disliked him for giving monkeys and apes a bad name. In a separate episode called Get Back Jojo, Mojo went back in time to prevent the Powerpuff Girls from being created, and she intended to destroy Professor Utonium while the latter was a child. This plot was thwarted by the girls, but it became the catalyst behind the professor gaining an interest in science in the first place. This basically made Mojo the reason behind the creation of the Powerpuff Girls, putting him in a weird situation once again. But he is not at all that bad. He has saved the day just like the girls, albeit not with the intention of making the world a better place. For example, when an alien overlord tried to destroy Earth and rule over humans, Mojo was left distraught by having his dreams stolen by another supervillain. Stressed beyond measure, Mojo attacked the overlord viciously and made him submit to him. In the end, the alien fled Earth in terror due to Mojo, making Mojo the reason why the Earth was saved. He was praised and hailed as a hero by the people of the town and the Powerpuff Girls, even though he did not like being seen in that light and tried retaining his reputation as a menacing supervillain. Mojo Jojo was a good guy in the Powerpuff Girls rule. At this time, it was intentional. He had attained his lifelong dream of ruling over the world, but instead of becoming a tyrannical ruler like everyone expected him to be, Mojo turned out to be a kind ruler. He solved the problems of the world, such as world hunger, and used his intellect to cure all diseases. Everyone, including the girls, were shocked. However, he soon got bored of being the good guy and went back to his old ways, making the Powerpuff Girls intervene once again. Ultimately, he was apprehended and sent to prison. We will be known as the Silver Beetles! What was Mojo Jojo really like? Created after Dr. Gori from the Japanese series Spectre Man, a heavy Japanese influence is prevalent throughout Mojo's appearance and design. He was made to look more like a realistic chimp, at least realistic for cartoon standards. Throughout the first four seasons, however, his features gradually got more angular, changing his appearance. He had a personality you would expect a villain of his caliber to have. As someone with superhuman intelligence, he often spent his hours inventing new technology, creating weapons, and brainstorming ideas to take care of the Powerpuff Girls once and for all. He is the primary antagonist that the girls fight against, and easily their toughest rival. So much so that Mojo has defeated the girls numerous times. Even though the girls are literally protected by the greatest defense of all time, the plot armor, with his evil mind, Mojo can be very cunning, which he uses to exploit the weakness of the Powerpuff Girls. He does not care for people's approval or rules, often acting as a loner who does not like to be around humans who will bother him whenever he's engrossed in his scheming and inventions. He does what he wants and is versatile enough to live as both, a supervillain who keeps the Powerpuff Girls on their toes as a civilian who takes leisurely walks on the streets. In fact, he is hostile towards the girls only when they're acting as an obstacle. Other than that, he is quite amicable with his rivals, making friendly conversation from time to time. Mojo has his own twisted sense of humor and a solid sense of loyalty. In one episode, he sided with the Apes Army, since the race was being discriminated against by the humans. He stuck by his people, or rather his apes, until he was betrayed by them. He can even maintain good relationships with other villains, 
and help people out with things that will not benefit him. Mojo's fatal flaw turns out to be his rage, which makes him succumb to his primal, animal-like traits. However, if he gains the ability to channel his anger the correct way, Mojo can be stronger than the Powerpuff Girls. Not that he is not dangerous already, which brings us to our next segment. To help them get big and strong for Mojo's deadly kitten army! What makes Mojo Jojo so dangerous. Mojo Jojo is dangerous because of his wits and innovative abilities. He can create high-tech weapons and gadgets by himself. With his ability to figure out his opponent's weaknesses, manipulate them, and then create a weapon to take them down, Mojo Jojo becomes a very dangerous villain to have to go against. Mojo does not have his superpowers like the Powerpuff Girls, but his tactical and cunning mind is more than enough to make him the biggest obstacle in their path. He is also impeccable in teamwork, as we have seen with the Beat Alls. When injected with Chemical X, Mojo acquires superpowers such as being able to cause sound waves with his claps, breathing fire, and shooting hair spikes. In this form, he is invincible, and the only way to counter him requires his opponents to first strip Mojo of his powers. With his fury by his side, which only gets triggered once the villain reaches his breaking point, he can defeat those who the girls cannot. And for this, he does not even need his weapons. Raw strength does the trick. Around this time, he had even acquired the ability to fly. An interesting ability that Mojo boasts has nothing to do with his villainous endeavors, but everything to do with his Japanese roots. Mojo is a masterful chef when it comes to making sushi, and he showed off his abilities while babysitting the Powerpuff Girls. He even called himself the best chef in Townsville. However, the girls did not enjoy the food, and the reason remains ambiguous. Sushi does take some time to get used to if you're not born into the culture, and for most, it's, well, it's an acquired taste. Surely a whole new world opens up to you once you do acquire the taste, but you would need a mature palate to start appreciating the dish in the first place. Naturally, it is not something you can expect five-year-olds to enjoy. But with my own bare hands! Marvelous verdict. Clearly, Mojo Jojo is a cut above the rest regarding being a competent villain. Not only does he actually pose a threat and is not just there as comic relief, but he also has several layers to his personality. He's not your regular one-dimensional villain who is just a bad person with evil intentions. He even seems to be the type you could be great friends with, at least as long as you don't cross him. And if you liked our content, well, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.